Hello everyone, good noon, welcome to my live stream or my recorded video. Let me just remind everyone that the reason I'm doing this is because I read in Matthew 13 that Jesus says that those who don't understand the doctrine will be taken by the enemy. Therefore, I want to review the doctrines and if other people will benefit by listening or watching, then it is just additional uh, benefit of this activity. So, the topic this uh, time is turn back the clock, the road to good health. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, be merciful to us, forgive us from our many sins, give us wisdom and understanding as we study the Bible, give us conviction of the Holy Spirit so that we can have longer lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn back the clock, the road to good health. There was a monastery on one of the Portuguese islands and it is up in the island the only way to go up the island is to be pulled up with a rope riding a basket so one of the monks said how often do you replace the the rope and then the one who is pulling the rope said don't worry we replace the rope every time it breaks <laughs> you replace the rope every when it breaks that means somebody has to fall yeah so <laughs> this is is this what we do with our health we take care of it when it starts to fail maybe and uh, this is uh, a little bit funny but actually it's what many of us do <clears throat> We take care and get serious of our health when our health starts to break, starts to fail. Actually, health is a choice. Whether you want to obey the nature's laws or you just want to obey your senses. There is a doctor named Dr. Breslow. Of University of California Los Angeles <clears throat> he gave a survey to 7,000 people with seven questions regarding the health habits and observed these people and uh, versus uh, good health practices versus poor health uh, lifestyle these are the questions do you smoke do you drink alcohol and if so, to what extent do you get regular exercise? How many hours do you sleep every night? How much do you weigh? Do you eat breakfast regularly? Do you snack between meals or on a regular basis? Those are the seven questions Dr. Breslow asked. Breslow, Dr. Breslow. So those who faithfully followed the good health habits of those seven questions lived an average of 11.5 longer years than those who don't who did not so is 11 years good for you some people battle to live just another month so this is how we the bible helps us live longer actually God wants us to live longer. In 3 John 2, it says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your souls prosper. 3 John verse, chapter 1, verse 2. So Jesus said uh, in uh, John 10, 10, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more 
abundantly. The reason Jesus came to earth is so that we can have life. And so, as you see in the picture, there is plenty of good food and flowers and vegetables and fruits. That is in John 10.10. 10. Not only does God want us to give eternal life, He also wants us to be happy in this a current life so that we can have a better relationship with him because when we are healthy when our minds are clear we can hear the holy spirit better we can understand the bible better and we can communicate with god better exodus 15:26 says that there is a condition when we obey God's health laws, it says, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in His sight, give ear to His commandments and keep all His statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord your God who heals you. So, the condition in the Bible, if we obey everything that the Lord says, He will not make us, He will not allow us to get sick. <clears throat> he also says in Exodus 23 25, So you shall serve the Lord your God, and He will bless you with bread and water. So, when we serve God, God will bless us. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Wow. Exodus 23, 25. When we obey God and when we serve Him, God takes away sickness from the midst of us. Did you understand, my friend? Wow. That's priceless medical information. If you want to serve to be your sickness to be from away away from you obey god and serve him psalm 105 37 there was none feeble among his tribes if they obeyed nobody was feeble okay <clears throat> so how come today there's so much sickness it's so complicated and the decisions are so many. Huh? Probably you can guess that because people don't obey. But the question would be, do the sicknesses in today's world were already there in the time of the Egyptians? Because the Bible says, <clears throat> actually a team of specialists Around the world gathered in 1975 to perform autopsies on Egyptian mummies in the Museum of Medicine and Health in Manchester, England. These mummies were as old as 1900 BC, <clears throat> and the findings were very surprising. The ancient Egyptians had heart disease, cancer, vascular diseases, arthritis, and other things. It's the same. Even if Egypt was very cultured during Moses' time, they were still suffering the same thing. In 1552 BC, not long after the birth of Jesus, a, birth, a famous medical book was written in Egypt called the Papyrus Ebers. This book list the scores of remedies or cures for a host of diseases or infections and accidents of course uh, they are outdated and most of them were not useful that's why but the bible tells us that if we obey god we will not get sick like the egyptians so what are the instructions given by God to Moses. Huh? The instructions include concerns about sanitation, 
quarantine, personal hygiene, nutrition, and some things that the Egyptians did not know. If you want to read those, you will read some in this lecture, but in the Bible, it's there. You read the first five books of the Bible. Where did Moses get these amazing uh, principles and guidelines? Of course, from God. God, why? Because it is God who designed our bodies. He knows how we can avoid diseases and keep our bodies at optimum performance. So, uh, you can just imagine if you bought a car, but you did not read what kind of oil, what kind of fuel, what kind of steering fuel, transmission fuel, and other things, gear oil, you have to put. So you just put cooking oil because that's what you want to eat. <laughs> but it would not uh, last long, right? So more so, if you want to take care of your car according to specifications of the manufacturer, more so, should you take, should we take care of our bodies according to the manufacturer, which is God? And the manufacturer instructions on what to eat, etc., are in the Bible. Amazing. What should we put in our bodies? It is in Genesis 1.29. It says, God said to Adam and Eve, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of the earth. What is the original diet? Herbs. And every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it shall be for food. Genesis 1.29. Okay. And you shall eat the herb of the field. So, Nuts, gruel, uh, grains, and vegetables, those were the original best diet for humans, according to God. And even science agrees with that. Genesis 5.27 says, So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. 969, almost 1,000 years. But because of sin, nobody ever lived more than one prophetic day, which is 1,000 years. Because God said, you shall, on the day you eat of the fruit, forbidden fruit, you shall surely die. So that's why nobody ever lived more than 1,000 years. Genesis 5.29, Methuselah, the longest who lived. 600, uh, 969 years. If you look at how the lifespan of people in history has uh, lessened, you will see Noah's son, Shem, lived 600 years old. His grandson, 239 years old. His great-grandson, do you know why Noah and his, grands, uh, his children lived uh, shorter? Because they ate meat by the time of king david before noah everybody was vegetarian At, after the flood then they started eating meat because there's no vegetables there's no trees by the time of king david man lived about 70 years so what was the reason in Genesis 7-2, because there were no more plants after the flood, God said, you shall take with you seven each of every clean animal. So even during the flood, they already knew what was clean and not clean. A male and his female, two each of animals that are unclean, a male and each female. And you may eat every animal with cloven hooves. Okay. So the hoof must be cloven like this. Okay. Like the cow and the carabao. Having the hoof split into two parts, 
and chews the cud. That means it eats grass and when it's resting, it's still chewing the cud among the animals. Examples are the ox, sheep, deer, goat, wild goat, antelope, cow, gazelle, and others. It's in Deuteronomy 14, 4 to 6, and also in Leviticus 11. But these things you should not eat. Camel, rabbit, swine, and rock, and badger. Okay, so those things are unclean. These are clean. And these are unclean, including pigs, swine. Leviticus 11, 7 and 8 says, And the swine, though it divides the hoof, having cloven hooves, yet it does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you, according to God. Their flesh you shall not eat. This is about the pigs or swine. And their carcasses you shall not touch. They are unclean to you. You know, pigs have uh, plenty of parasites because they are scavengers. There is a uh, small microbe called trichinosis. <clears throat> I think that is the sickness that can kill you. Because God knew that these pigs are not food. So even science agrees with what the Bible says. But there are many good things that God gave, like fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Psalm 84, 11 says, No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. That means the bad things God says, do not, do not do it, do not eat them. The good things like pineapple and the watermelon are fruits. They are good and everybody likes them. How about for fish? Deuteronomy 14, 9 and 10 says, This you may eat of all that are in the water. You may eat all that have fins and scales. They have, they have fins and scales. And whatever does not have fins and scales, you shall not eat. It is unclean to you. Okay. So, there must have fins and scales. There was a doctor named Bruce Halstead of Loma Linda University. He was tasked by the U.S. government to do a research for the military. They wanted to know if you are stuck somewhere, what kind of uh, fish can you eat? And according to the conclusion <clears throat> given to the military, it's very easy. The Israelites knew it 3,500 years ago. It should have fins and scales so <clears throat> how about the birds Deuteronomy 14 11 and 12 says all clean birds you may eat but this you shall not eat the vulture buzzard red kite falcon raven ostrich owl stork heron and the bat if you try to see the characteristics of all of this they are all scavengers or they are predators they eat other animals and other birds also every creeping thing that flies is unclean for you you shall not they shall not be eaten so everything that creeps on the belly we cannot eat <clears throat> Is the, are these instructions only for Israelites? No. This was even before science. Leviticus 3.17 says, This shall be a perpetual statute throughout your generations in all your dwellings. You shall either eat, neither eat fat nor blood. Sometimes you eat cow or chicken. Or clean but you eat the fat and the blood that's why you still get sick like the people who don't know the Bible because 
we are eating the fat and the blood. So make sure to remove it according to the Bible. <clears throat> we know that the blood carries all the impurities. We know that the fat also gives us plenty of heart problems. Genesis 2.15 says, <clears throat> Not only food, but we have to exercise. Genesis 2.15 Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. What is the best exercise? Gardening. Tending the garden. <clears throat> in the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. You know, gardening and labor is a blessing according to Genesis 3.19. Exercise. Yeah. <clears throat> Why does God care about our body? Because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 10 and 20. Or do you know or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you? Or whom you have from God and you are not of your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in our body and in your spirit which are God's. So it's our body is not ours. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> First Corinthians 10 31 says, Therefore, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Okay. What if we do not take care of our body? What will happen? Do you think God will give us, trust us with more if we do not ca take care of our current body? It says in 1 Corinthians 3.17, If anyone defiles the temple of God, and our body is a temple of God, God will destroy him also. For the temple of God is holy, which temple we are wow so this is god is entrusting us with this temporary temple so that if we are trustworthy with taking good care of it god will entrust us with the eternal body this doesn't die <clears throat> do you first corinthians 6 9 and 10 do not be deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards. So drunk drinking, getting drunk is also not good. Will inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, that is why Seventh-day Adventists prohibit alcohol consumption so it is also moral law and also physical law not taking care of your body becoming a drunkard drinking alcohol the bible says you cannot go to heaven do not deceive yourselves you're not going to drink beer in heaven <clears throat> if you read the news you watch youtube most of the problems are from people who are drunk there is rape there are many car accidents many stupid things happen because people are drunk under the influence half of all murders is because the killer or both the victim have been drinking and then try to sue the police the establishment etc i wish they would sue the one who sold them liquor or the one who makes the liquor that's why participating in the liquor business is not uh, very good not innocent proverbs 20 verse 1 says wine is a mocker strong drink is a brawler and whoever is led astray by it is not wise Proverbs 23, 31-32 says, Do not look upon the wine, 
when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly, at the last it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. And your eyes will see strange things and your heart will utter perverse things. That's why do not drink liquor. An alcoholic develops a fatty liver and will have the chances, higher chances of dying from cirrhosis of the liver. Drink drunk cards have a lifespan shorter 12 years on average according to statistics. And most people who become drunk cards start with a little drink. So do not taste. But for Christians, we understand that not only the liver, but we also want to use our minds to understand God's word and to avoid Satan's temptations. When, we are, when you are drunk, when people are drunk, Satan can inject any stupid things. Therefore, we don't want to our judgment to be impeded and our control to be lost to distinguish between right and wrong. Drunkards uh, have a hard time distinguishing between right and wrong, even between left and right. What else? Cigarette smoking. It causes cancer. You just read the label. Cigarette smoking is that good for your health. They have 1,000% chance of dying from lung cancer. Those who smoke. Okay, so thou shalt not kill, the Bible says. <clears throat> Those who smoke who are pregnant risk to put their child at uh, infant death of more than 30%. So that means that almost half a million die because of each year, die each year because of cigarette. And then they try to get angry, and but they should not just uh, remove the, just stop smoking. <clears throat> Caffeine, the drug contained in coffee and other colas is classed in textbooks as both a stimulant and a poison, according to Dr. Harold Shryok, a medical doctor. Okay, it gives neurological disorders, cancer of the can and cancer of the bladder. So without caffeine, our life will be better, not addicted. <clears throat> but if even if you eat the right things, if you eat too much, too much, it's not good also. <clears throat> Someone has estimated that every pound of body fat calls for another, for another two-thirds mile of new blood vessels. So let us be temperate and the heart must pump blood through this extra system of vessels. So, let us enjoy the good things that God has given us. Let us be responsible and we will have <clears throat> a nice life if we follow God's instructions. So, one of the principles of health is also rest. It says in Math Mark 6.31, Come aside by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. Rest is very important. And if we want to follow God, we, we want to obey His will. But is it difficult to obey God's will because we have fallen nature? Don't worry. We cannot actually follow all of this by ourselves. But with God, you can do anything. <clears throat> John 15, 5 says, Without me, you can do nothing. But Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
Can you stop eating pork? Through Jesus Christ. Can you stop smoking and drinking? Through Jesus Christ. Can you overcome all of your bad health habits? Through Jesus Christ. You can do all things and be freed from all those health abuses. How about <clears throat> drugs or cocaine? Huh? It causes moral bankruptcy, social problems, physical abuse, and others, and it is illegal. So, <clears throat> we have to, some people need to go to rehabilitation, huh? like this guy named Paul. He could not break his old habits he used to be addicted to cocaine he lost all his money his friends his health and she, he, he needed to look for help so he could not break the old habits these are addicting things but somebody introduced paul to jesus and he learned to he learned about how god loves him and how he could save him from his life. And he gained the victory through Jesus' strength and power to overcome the habits that have enslaved him. And he says, if Jesus can deliver me, he can also help you with your habits. <clears throat> so my friend, God wants us to have health spiritually, emotionally, and physically. So it might take, it might be an addiction to a stimulant like coffee or drugs or beer or smoking or a behavior that's not good or food. <clears throat> God understands and he will give us strength to overcome if we ask God for help. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your warnings, for your instructions for us to live longer and be good stewards of the body you have lent us. Forgive us from all our mistakes in the past. Give us wisdom and understanding to obey your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.